This build is a super cheap league starter to do all content, there are no expensive uniques or items that will give you a hard time getting. You will still have the option to invest some currency to make it even stronger. Recommendations for that and all kinds of questions aren't will be answered on a specific thread by Shepard on the PoE forum. You can also ask your questions in the comment section of this video and I will do my best to answer all of them. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to not miss any new builds. Without further ado, lean back, relax and let's get started. This build guide contains Build Showcase, Disclaimer, Content Overview, Equipment, Gems, Jewels and Abyss Jewels, Flasks, Skill Tree, Ascendancy Points, Pantheon Powers, Bandit Choice and some gameplay footage. Before we jump into the equipment section of this video, I want to give you some basic guidelines in order to equip your character. First, get the mandatory flasks and unique items. Second, get basic gear using mostly rare items. Overcap your elemental resistances to deal with elemental curses. Try to get a good life or mana roll on every item that can have one. Ideally, your mana should be around two-thirds of your life. Get a spell dagger or unique that fits your budget. Third, once you can afford better gear, start replacing excess resistances for other things like damage, mobility or HP. You can also try out some optional uniques. We are going to use a rare helmet with life and mana, resistances and stats we might need. Optional, you could use one of the following. Red's Nest and Devoted's Devotion increase your mobility at the cost of life and resistances. Sarconia's Head has a good life roll, but no resists and a bit less mobility. Indigon has a really high potential, but requires you to completely build around it. It is also very expensive, that's why I won't cover it for that reason. Try to get Dark Pack Damage, Dark Pack Cast Speed or Lightning Golem Buff Enchant since they provide a decent power boost, but are hard to get. If you choose to go with a rare item, go with a dagger that contains spell damage, attack speed, crit chance, cast speed and resistance as if needed. I also recommend using two apps rage in your weapon swap because they offer insane damage for their budget. Once disable your movement skills so you have to use lightning warp or flame dash instead. Shimmeron does more damage than apps if you're using power charges but also costs more. Dual void batteries are the best DPS weapons you can get, they cost even more than Shimmeron and deal about the same damage. But they also have mana and don't hurt you when you accidentally hit an enemy. Both of these ones require you to get instability and overcharge in the passive tree or they won't be good. Eclipse Solaris is an extreme budget option. Divinarius has a really good price and damage ratio but it lacks attack speed so it might feel slow. Bright Beak is the best option for mobility but provides no damage bonus. It's also a good option for early mapping because it gives quite some resistances. Try to get a nice spirit shield containing life, mana, spell damage, crit chance, cast speed and some resistances if needed. Optional you could use Troll Timber Spa to gain about 1.2k leech per second in exchange for damage, or Red Series Reflection, currently extremely expensive, gives you 100% curse immunity so you don't need to use Kikasaru. In my eyes this has two advantages. First you can build to be more tanky but deal less damage, second you have more space for gear which means you can get a lot of magic find. Soul Mantle is one of our mandatory uniques, level 20 spell totem, spell damage, tons of energy shield, increased totem life, one additional totem and inflicts a random level 20 curse when your totem dies. Any more questions? Fingerless Silk Gloves are the best glove base if you're not planning to get a corruption or an enchantment. They should contain life, mana, resistances and stats you might need. You can also get insanity crafted gloves to speed up your movement skill. Maligoros Virtuosity and Voidbringer can increase your damage but offer little else. Kalisa's Grace offers a decent life roll and damage increase. The faster casting support can be helpful for some gem setups, for example Flame Dash. Sadima's Touch for item quantity. Get your hands on a good pair of rare boots containing life, mana, movement speed and resistances. If you want to get into some magic find, use Goldworm for item quantity. Try to get an increased critical strike chance if you haven't crit recently or regenerate X percentage of life and mana per second if you were hit recently enchant. The best belt base right now is a Stygian Vice, otherwise get a leather belt. Look for life and resistances to optimize your defense. A rare amulet is the most versatile option here. Look for life, mana, crit multiplier, cast speed and resistances. Weaker options are spell damage and crit chance. Blood Grip is a good way to get more life recovery as it doubles the healing from flasks. Viscous color for item quantity. Two Kikasaros are our second mandatory uniques. They provide a ton of lightning resistances, all attributes, mana regeneration rate, reduced effect of curses on us, and one life regenerated per second per level.
In our body armor we were socket, dark pact, void manipulation support, added chaos damage support, controlled destruction support as our base 4 link, increased area of effect or concentrated effect support as our 5 link and increased critical strike support to complete our 6 link. As one of our 4 link setups we're gonna take despair, arcane surge support level 10, faster casting support and increased duration support. Despair makes our enemies take more damage and also buffs us with Arcane Surge. Arcane Surge is on level 10 to proc after every cast. Tier 16 plus bosses are very resistant to curses, so this setup's purpose is mostly to act as a quick trigger for Arcane Surge and the damage boost while mapping. As another falling setup we're gonna take Wither, faster casting support, increased duration support and either Arcane Surge support or increased area of effect support. Wither should be used mostly against bosses. It nearly doubles your damage but also takes a bit to ramp up. You can also run a skeleton setup while channeling. Wither, summon skeleton, cast when channeling support and increase duration support. There are several pros and cons to using skeletons. I recommend you to try them for yourself and see if they fit your playstyle or not. This is the best setup for pure damage but also requires a bit of investment to be good. Early on self-casting totems will be better because they start out with more life and therefore more damage. As you level your skeleton gem it will begin to outscale the totems. They also benefit more from added chaos damage like Apep's Rage or the support gem. If you want to min-max the setup for endgame, you should put this into an Elder Hammer with minion life and level of socketed minion gems. The next falling setup is Enfeeble level 5, Immortal Call level 3, Cast 1 damage taken support level 1 and increased duration support. A defensive setup that protects us from burst damage against trash mobs, Cast 1 damage taken support is on level 1 to proc as often as possible since these skills don't benefit that much from levels. Temporal Chains is another alternative to Enfeeble. Our 3 link setup will be Shield Charge, Faster Attack Support and Fortify Support. Mobility and damage reduction on a movement skill. Shield Charge scales with both attack speed and movement speed. You can also use Whirling Blades if you prefer it. If you use a wand as your weapon you can use Lightning Warp, Less Duration Support and Swift Affliction Support. It's worse than Shield Charge but there is really nothing else you can use with wands. In one of our 3 link spots you can use a 2 link containing Summon Lightning Golem level 20 and Cast when Damage Taken Support level 20. The open socket can be used for flame dash. The golem provides good DPS and mobility and cast when damage taken support ensures it is always active. You can also use a stone golem instead. Flame dash helps you to get over obstacles such as ledges. We have two mandatory unique jewels. Self-flagellation to obtain increased damage per curse on us and we can have one additional curse. Clear mind to get some mana regeneration rate and more importantly increased spell damage while no mana is reserved. As a rule of thumb, two skill point jewel passives are only worth taking if you have three useful mods on a jewel. On rare jewels we are looking for these specific stats in prioritized order. Increased maximum life, increased crit multiplier, increased damage, increased crit chance, increased cast speed, increased totem life and elemental resistances. On abyss jewels we are looking for these specific stats in prioritized order. To maximum life, to maximum mana, increase crit chance if you haven't crit recently, increase global crit multiplier, increase global crit chance, increase cast speed, adds chaos damage to spells and elemental resistances. The stats are ordered in estimated importance and can vary from character to character. Abyss and rare jewels are fairly equal in power, but abyss jewels can be more defensive due to the flat mana roll. A small tip on the side, get one jewel with at least 9% totem elemental resistances to cap your totems resists. This can be helpful for endgame boss fights. Our mandatory flasks are an instant life flask to save your life, a diamond flask for DPS and a quicksilver flask to go fast. The other two flask spots are based on personal preference. A second longer healing life flask can be helpful with survival. A silver flask grants the second highest damage boost and will also speed you up. A basalt flask is on average worse than Rumi's concoction but is more reliable. Recommended mods for magic flasks are of staunching to remove bleed and of heat to deal with freeze and chill immunity. And do yourself a favor and do not get a warding flask, they will remove your curses which means you lose damage from self-legulation. Rumi's concoction will grant enough armor to deal with smaller attacks and boost your block to around 50%. Lavianga spirit enables you to do no regen maps, and the witchfire brew can apply a despair curse aura to increase your damage. A detailed skill tree plan, leveling advices and gear choices while leveling are listed in Shepard's thread on the Path of Exile forum. Links are given in the description below. As our ascendancy points we're gonna take Pursuit of Faith, Ritual of Awakening, Divine Guidance and for Eternal Labyrinth we actually got three choices. 
Sanctuary of Thought will give you about 1.5k energy shield and more mana. This is the best defensive note by far. Recommended Conviction of Power offers a mix between offense and defense and is also required if you want to use power charges. Illuminated Devotion adds decent damage and minor totem survivability through Leech. The extra area of effect makes it the best for clear speed. As our Pantheon powers we're gonna take a maximum upgraded Soul of the Brine King as our Major God for stun protection and an upgraded Soul of Frieslata for emergency healing and flask recharge in a labyrinth, but there are a lot of other good options. We're gonna choose the Bandit Lord Alira for mana regeneration, global critical strike multiplier and all elemental resistances. Thanks for watching my video, I would greatly appreciate your support with a simple like on this video, your thoughts and feelings about the content itself in a comment, on top of that subscribe to my youtube channel if you want to see more videos from me in the future, it is totally free so become a part of our great community. A big thanks to Shepard for creating the guide and providing me with the footage for our project, if you want to see more gameplay footage of this build check out his channel, take care and have a great day. Run along. Back, trespasser. Cease this. You tamper with things you do not understand. Final warning. Leave. You force my hand again, little mouse. So be it. You've chosen to side with chaos. This is my world, and you shall obey my order. They're coming through.
the face of your unmaking. Father, it's me. Let me help you. The horror must be stopped. Obstacles destroyed! Out Come to chaos. me! to you, Father. I'm your true memory. To save the future, the past must be sacrificed. Gaze into the abyss. They're coming through. <laughs> 